Hello and welcome to the Seek2 lecture on acute abdominal pain. Today we will be going over a number of objectives. We will be reviewing the abdominal examination. We will also discuss the workup that patients should undergo by location of the pain. We will talk about patients that you can send home. And we will also discuss myths that exist in medicine about abdominal pain. So let's talk about the abdominal examination. The abdominal exam consists of history. Inspection, auscultation. Palpation and the rectal exam. Now let's talk about each one in detail. When you take a history, it is important to ask a series of questions. Where is the pain? Has the patient produced any stool at all in the last three days? Does the patient have nausea or vomiting? Does the patient have diarrhea? And is there any evidence of hematochesia or melanoma? Each of these parts of the history can lead you to a different diagnosis. Next, let's talk about inspection. It is very important after revealing the abdomen of your patient that you examine each of the five major areas of the abdomen. Those are the right upper quadrant, the epigastric region, the left upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant and the left lower quadrant. In addition, it is important to examine whether tympany is present, which can be a sign of obstruction. You can also look for fluid wave, which may be a sign of liver disease. And some patients are scaphoid, meaning they have a scalloped shaped stomach, which is a sign of marasmus, or severe calorie malnutrition. Now let's talk about auscultation. Auscultation means listening to the abdomen of the patient. With your stethoscope. Decreased sounds can be a sign of obstruction or ischemia. By contrast, hyperactive sounds can indicate that inflammation is present. Inflammation 
you can also palpate the abdomen. Ba, yung ko trai stiep pu phong dai. In five locations. Nơi đầm bon tiang pram. Epigastric, left upper quadrant. Ba, nơi đầm bon chong đằng hám, nơi đầm bon phai càng stam phai càng lơ. Right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant. Càng lơ phai càng chuyển, càng cao phai càng chuyển, càng stam phai càng chuyển. And the left lower quadrant. Đầm bon nơi ngay càng cao phai càng chuyển. It is important that you press superficial and then deep. As you saw in the video. In addition, the palpation can tell you where the surgical issues are likely to be. Right-sided pain is more likely to be of a surgical cause. In addition, rebound and guarding can be signs of a surgical abdomen that needs an operation. Rebound is where the pain is worse when you take your hand off of the stomach than when you press in. Guarding is where the patient clenches their abdomen involuntarily when the physician presses on it. Now let's discuss the rectal exam. If you notice on looking at the rectum or in the patient's stool that they have melana, then they may have an upper GI bleed. The minimum amount of blood in a black stool is 0.6 grams of hemoglobin. That is the same as about one half of a unit of blood minimum per stool that is black. This may be a, This is the, about the same as one half unit of blood. Okay. In addition, the source of the blood when the stool is black is likely to be the stomach or the duodenum. Now let's talk about hematochesia. Hematochesia is frank blood. The minimum amount of blood in a red stool is 0.2 grams of hemoglobin or one-fifth of a unit of blood. There could be more, but that is the minimum amount in a red stool. Hematochesia indicates a lower GI bleed. That lower GI bleed can be in the distal small bowel. Or in the large intestine, including the anus. Next, let's talk about what you do about GI bleeds to treat them. First, 
First, if a patient has a GI bleed, you should check their hemoglobin every four hours when they first arrive to make sure it is not decreasing. Ba, chẳng bên này chẳng ngư mà đau môn tầm bốn bà sân miên chi ai bị điên dừng tới chạy mơ em bốc lộ biên riêng rõ buôn mau mà đón. There are two indications to transfuse immediately. Ba, đầm bây bằng chạy thà ta dừng tới thư vơ ca bằng châu chiếm chạp liêm liêm tế. One is if the hemoglobin is less than six grams per deciliter. The other is if the patient has symptomatic anemia. Some patients with a low hemoglobin that is more than six will, for example, have syncope. This is an indication to give them blood. Contact a surgeon if you have a patient with a very low hemoglobin below 6. If the concentration is falling by more than one gram per deciliter per hour. If the patient has unstable vital signs. Or if as in this patient in the video. The patient has copious blood in the vomit or the stool. Now, let's talk about the workup by sight of the pain. The pain location tells you which tests to order for the blood as well as which imaging. We will discuss this workup in the write up quadrant. The left upper quadrant. The epigastric region. The right lower quadrant. The left lower quadrant. And in patients who have multi quadrant pain. Let's talk about right upper quadrant pain workup. Patients with right upper quadrant pain should have a CBC, a chemistry and liver function test. The CBC, in general, looks for signs of inflammation as well as anemia. The chemistry, or biochemie, looks for signs of renal insufficiency, dehydration, or for signs of GI bleed. You can also see signs of acidosis, which would indicate the patient is more sick than other patients. You may also order liver function tests to look for signs of hepatitis or bile gallbladder disease, including cholecystitis. The imaging that you should order is an ultrasound of the gallbladder and the liver. Ultrasound 
If you do not have an ultrasound at your facility, try to arrange for transport for the patient if they are stable to obtain one. Ba ba san ji yeung khmien ultrasound nơ kalaing thơ ka, echo nơ kalaing thơ ka, yeung te yeung trơ kua tai ban chun tơ kalaing sen tiet dai mien samat phiep thơ. Ba san ji yeung kut tha chăm bạch. Always under the supervision of a physician. Ba hai nơ kraom ka trup pi nat robas krup pet. The differential diagnosis for surgical causes that you must find in right upper quadrant pain includes cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, cholangitis, cholangitis, perforation, perforation, and abscess. And abscess, except for amoebic abscesses, which are only treated with antibiotics in most cases. Remember that we are emphasizing in this lecture the surgical causes that you can find. As Surgical causes will need to have a surgeon consulted immediately to save the patient's life. Now, let's talk about the left upper quadrant. The lab tests that you order for the left upper quadrant include a CBC in chemistry for the similar reasons to the reasons why we ordered those tests in the right upper quadrant pane. For the left upper quadrant only, you should order a lipase or if it's not available, an amylase test to look for pancreatitis. If the test result is high, meaning it is positive, you should order liver function tests to look for evidence of severe liver disease. And an ultrasound of the gallbladder to look for evidence of cholelithiasis. Because if cholelithiasis is present, the patient has a surgical issue. So, to review, the surgical causes of left upper quadrant pain that you must find gallstone pancreatitis, gallstone pancreatitis, perforation, perforation, and abscess. Now let's move on to epigastric pain. Epigastric pain requires the same workup for the left upper quadrant and the right upper quadrant that you saw before. In addition, you may consider obtaining a chest X-ray. A chest X-ray can see signs of effusion or pneumonia, both of which can cause epigastric pain. You may also consider beginning an acute coronary syndrome workup. This 
This includes obtaining an EKG every six hours. And your troponin, if one is available to. On the screen is the image of an EKG in a patient who presented in Cambodia with epigastric pain and no chest pain. They were having an inferior myocardial infarction. They received aspirin. And their Khmer physician saved their life. Now let's talk about right lower quadrant pain. The workup for right lower quadrant pain includes obtaining a CBC in chemistry. In addition, if your facility or referring facility has this available, you should obtain an ultrasound to look for appendicitis. If the ultrasound for appendicitis is not able to see the appendix but not negative for appendicitis, Please consider observing the patient for 24 hours and repeating the ultrasound the next day. If the patient has resolved pain and if they are still not able to see the appendix, then it is unlikely that they have appendicitis. If the patient has a resolution of their pain, and the ultrasound is twice in two days, not able to see the appendix. It is unlikely that the patient has appendicitis. You may also consider obtaining a CT of the abdomen and pelvis. If the ultrasound is not able to see the appendix, and the patient has persistent pain. The surgical causes of right lower quadrant pain that you must find include appendicitis, perforation, perforation, and abscess. This is an abscess on the appendix, which is inflamed. Now let's talk about right lower quadrant. You can't shoot just one second. Now let's discuss left lower quadrant pain. Left lower quadrant pain should have a CBC and chemistry ordered when it is present. If the patient appears to be unstable or has persistent pain you can't explain otherwise, consider obtaining a CT scan. Surgical causes of left lower quadrant pain that you must find include perforation, perforation, 
and abscess. Nâng abscess. In this case, this patient has a rectal abscess. Nơi khả năng cảm này nè, nè chỉ ngư miên abscess nơi rôn cụt. Now, let's discuss lower abdominal pain in women. Ê lời nè dương nâng vì phía xa ổng phí buộc phần này càng cao xâm rạp sạch trái. Women, due to the fact that there is a uterus, fallopian tube, and ovaries present, Women, because they have a uterus, okay. fallopian tubes, and ovaries. Require special testing. All women with lower abdominal pain should obtain a pelvic exam. You should also order a urinalysis in urine culture if available. Because lower abdominal pain is commonly caused by urinary tract infections in women. You should obtain a urine or serum chem, uh, pregnancy test. And if available, you should try to obtain a pelvic ultrasound. As the pelvic ultrasound is the test most likely to find the surgical causes of lower abdominal pain in women. The surgical causes of lower abdominal pain in women that you must find are retained products of conception, ectopic pregnancy, ovarian torsion, ovarian cyst hemorrhage, and salpingo ovarian abscess. Now, let's talk about multi-quadrant pain. All of these tests are highlighted yellow to emphasize that multi-quadrant pain requires you to order these tests and one new one. Did you to order those tests and one new one? The new test is a lactate. But uh, the reason you order a lactate is because you can find mesenteric ischemia with a lactate. In a patient who has pain that they complain about that is very severe, uh, but when you press on their abdomen, it feels very soft and does not seem to cause them very much pain. And they are old or have a history of heart attack or stroke. You, they may have mesenteric ischemia which is a lack of blood flow to the intestines. The lactate, if it is high, may indicate mesenteric ischemia is present. Lactate is also elevated, however, in patients with sepsis much of the time. The imaging studies that you should order include 
abdominal x-ray two view one upright and one lateral decubitus you may also consider obtaining a CT of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast. If that study is available to you and you have no other explanation for the pain which is persistent or if the patient is unstable. The X-ray is especially good at finding evidence of small bowel and large bowel obstruction. It may also sometimes find nephrolithiasis. Nephrolithiasis. Which is a cause of pain in any quadrant in the abdomen. They're not usually a surgical issue. Surgical causes of multi-quadrant pain that you must find include small bowel obstruction Notice the many flat lines on this upright abdominal X-ray. This is called multiple air fluid levels. And is nearly always caused by small bowel obstruction. The patient may also have volvulus. Which is a twisting of the bowel. Which can cause obstruction and ischemia which on its own is a surgical issue the patient could also have perforation or abscess located anywhere in the abdomen causing pain in all the quadrants or in simply more than one but not all. Now, let's discuss who can go home. Patients without rebound or guarding Patients who are hemodynamically stable. Patients who are eating and drinking normally. Patients with pain that is low on oral medication. And patients with a negative workup. Have been thoroughly evaluated by an excellent Khmer physician and are ready to go home. Now, let's talk about true or false. This is a question. I want you to think about it then give us an answer. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? The cause of the pain is always where the pain is. 
ដាក់តាឯកភាពនេះទេ it's false. Good call. The pain site indicates which workup to do. It tells you which lab test to order and which imaging. But the sick organ could be somewhere else. Examples by the location of the pain include Epigastric pain caused by gallstones Left upper quadrant pain caused by pneumonia So keep an open mind and be thorough in your investigation of where the pain might be. Let's do another true-false question. Is it true that you should not give pain medicine to patients with abdominal pain? Uh, is it true that analgesia makes it impossible to get a good abdominal exam? Think about the question. What's your answer? The answer is false. Give patients analgesia. They need pain relief. Key findings will not disappear. They will still feel some degree of discomfort in the pain location. And rebound and guarding do not go away no matter how much morphine you give a patient. Provided you do not cause them apnea. As long as you do not cause them apnea. So let's review the key points from today's lecture. Do the full abdominal exam on your patients. Look, Look for GI bleed. This, a GI bleed is one of the most dangerous causes of abdominal pain. That means you should do a rectal exam on all of your patients with abdominal pain. Remember that the pain site tells you which workup to do. If you order the tests that we mentioned, they will, to the best extent possible, lead you to a diagnosis. If it is possible to come to a diagnosis for the source of the pain. Hai nâng thưa ca rô vinh đi chai tới rô bà phốc đại bàn đà loại miên chứ. 
Remember that women require a few different special tests for lower abdominal pain. With privacy, do a pelvic exam on all women who present with lower abdominal pain who are less than 20 weeks pregnant. And all women who are not pregnant with lower abdominal pain should receive a pelvic exam. All women who are not pregnant who have lower abdominal pain should receive a pelvic exam. Finally, always give analgesia to your patients with acute abdominal pain. Sorry. Always give analgesia to your patients with abdominal pain. It will not prevent you from having a good exam for yourself or for the surgeon. Thank you very much to listening and watching this lecture on acute abdominal pain.